Hi everyone, Christina here. Today I'm going to be showing you some faux calligraphy or a way that you can take your own handwriting and embellish it just a little bit and it makes it look more fancy and almost like you've done calligraphy. I do this quite a bit. In fact, I showed it on my Instagram today, um, an envelope that I did for my friend Candy for her birthday. And um, I'm gonna show you today, like in this video, kind of exactly what I did or a variation on what I did. And this was heavily inspired by by a post that I found on Instagram. Um, it's over at ohsobeautifulpaper.com. You can head over to my blog for all of the links. But I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight into what I'm doing here. So the address I'm using today is for Heidi Krell. This is not her home address. This is the corporate address for Simon Says Stamps. So this is a business address. So I'm not sharing anyone's personal home address on the internet. So um, you gotta be careful with that. So. Um, anyway, this is just the Simon Says Stamp mailing address. So I thought I would use this so I could, um, instead of using a fake address that I would never use, this is an envelope that I could send. So the first thing I did was I'm, I'm sort of planning out my envelope, exactly what I want to do. And since I did one earlier today and I kind of have an idea, um, I was able to kind of skip a few steps. But basically what you want to do is maybe scribble on some paper, kind of practice what type of lettering you want to do, um, different things like that. And then you want to start penciling some lines on your envelope. Now I'm using a pencil here. It looks like a pen, but it's one of those like um, multi-pen and pencil pens, <laughs> like the little clicker ones on the top. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway... Penciling in all these lines. This is just going to help me make sure that as I write that I'm writing completely straight And then I also marked in where the center of the envelope is because that really helps me When I'm trying to get these centered on the envelope if I have a line that gives me a good reference because otherwise Mine are usually really off to one side So now I'm going to start going in and just writing Heidi's name and I when that little blip just a minute ago where I was counting the letters, that was me determining where the center of her name would be. And it turns out that the center of her name is that space right between her first and last name. So I started with the I at the end of Heidi and worked backwards. And now I'm going to do her last name, Crowell. And I'll just work from that center line as well. And this this really, really helps me when I'm doing kind of spacing on things. If you don't want to do it where you're writing things backwards, you could write it out on a separate piece of paper exactly how you want it to be. And then, you know, trim out that scratch paper and put it right above the first line and get it centered and then write the letters down below. So it gives you an idea of exactly the spacing that you need. So for the second line, I'm using more... Um, kind of more rounded off capital letters. The top the top line was very elongated, tall capital letters. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of cursive, just in pencil. Um, I'm making sure the letters are kind of spaced out a little bit so I have room to add things to it. And I'm just doing Columbus, Ohio. And that fit in there perfectly centered. I was really happy about that. And then for the zip code or the postal code, I did the same thing that I did when I did Heidi Krell. I started with the center number, which is a two, and then I added um, the numbers around that center. And that made sure that the zip code was completely centered. So after you have everything penciled on, you can go ahead and move to your pen. You can use whatever color you want. I'm going to be using a white gel pen today. This is the Sakura Jelly Roll pen. Um, normally in my crafting videos, I use the Uniball Signal Broad, but that one skips a little bit when you're trying to get a really um, smooth line. So for writing like this, I like to use the Jelly Roll. It's a little bit thinner line. It's really smooth. It's not quite as stark white as the pen I usually use, but in this case, it works well enough. And, you know, the trade-off of having it write really smoothly is that it's not quite as bright white as the Uniball. But I really love this Jelly Roll pen. So I'm going over all of my pencil writing, um, just exactly how it's written. I'm not adding anything else to it at this point. And I'm making sure that everything is written in there. And I'm double-checking my address on that Post-it, making sure everything's perfect. And then I decided to add two little hearts around the zip code. You could do dots or something like that if you wanted to. And I'm going to start embellishing. So what I'm doing is going in and adding some thicker lines on a few of these uh, parts of the address. Um, when I was initially doing this 
kind of design earlier today on some envelopes. I looked at a font on my computer to see exactly where those thicks and thins would be. So don't be afraid to like um, have a font pulled up on your computer or your iPad or even print out a sheet of letters so that it gives you an idea of where you want those thicks and thins. I did the same thing for this um, cursive down here at the bottom. It's going to start to look like calligraphy um, by just adding some thicks and thins. So it's a really easy way to embellish your own handwriting. Now it's going to look different for everyone with their different handwriting. So um, don't be discouraged if it doesn't look exactly like the font you're referencing or like anyone else that you see online. It's going to be a little bit different. And that's the kind of fun part about this is that you can really customize things and make it your own and make a really special envelope for your card recipient or if you're going to send a letter or whatever you're sending in your envelope. So I'm just going over the, uh, the last bit of the words here for Ohio, adding those thicks and thins. I think it's a really cool way to emphasize different words in an address. And here we go. I think this is pretty much done, but I'm going to go in and fix a few little spots where, you know, you, I didn't quite fill in everything all the way. And now I'm going to erase the lines. I'm using this like clicker pen eraser thing. <laughs> um, I used to use these all the time when I was in high school and college, and I'm so glad they're still around because they're so handy. I'm going to first erase all of the guidelines that I drew on. And the thing that's really neat about using that Jelly Roll pen is that it dries really fast. Um, my usual pen, the Uniball Signo Broad, you have to wait a few minutes to really erase things because it's such an opaque ink and it's so bright white that it takes a little longer to dry. But this one dries pretty quickly. So I'm just erasing all my lines. And after I've got those lines, I'll start erasing all of the words and over all of the words to make sure I get all the pencil over the words and it cleans everything up. So now I'm going to start to add a postage stamp and I've got all these vintage postage stamps that I've found online. You can also find like vintage stamps at like a stamp store locally, but um, head over to my blog. I've got some links to some online stores that sell vintage stamps. Um, one thing to know is that you're going to pay a little bit more than the face value of the stamp. So like I've got this five cent stamp, uh, Mississippi stamp, but I did not pay just five cents for it. I paid, I don't even know how much, probably more like 30 cents you know, something like that, because it is a vintage stamp. So you'd have to pay a little more. So I generally reserve these vintage stamps for special cards that I'm sending to family and friends. I don't like slap it on a bill that I'm paying. So head on over to my blog if you want to see um, some links for some inspiration envelopes and also for all of those vintage stamp stores. And I hope this was inspiring and I'll catch you guys next time. I have two more videos for you to check out and they are kind of handwriting calligraphy related. The first one is some brush lettering that I shared with you guys uh, about a month or so ago. You can click on that. And the second one is a Valentine's card that I did last year and I did the exact same thing I showed in this video today except I put it on a card I like just drew the happy Valentine's Day and then um, went over it and made those thicks and thins. So, you can do it on your cards, on your envelopes, um, labels uh, for labeling organization stuff in your house. You can do this type of writing anywhere you'd like. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and visit my blog at kwarnerdesign.com. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.